Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number nine of the Burning Rubber Podcast. I'm Jake Scarborough, joined by all four of my co-hosts for this year's edition of Burning Rubber. With uh, I'm here with Sal Zavala, uh, Matthew Stott, Keenan Kimber, and Fidel Fabian. How are you guys doing today? Doing pretty solid. It's been a good day so far. Let's keep it going. I'm tired. I'm sort of hungry. Well, <laughs> well Adele, I'm going to go ahead and say you should have got you something before you made us wait three thirty <laughs> to get whatever. <laughs> You're probably right. trying to bring that hairline in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we've got a lot to talk about today. Uh, first off, let's start off with the uh, Rolex 24. How, how, I don't know if any of you guys, or I know Sal did, I know Fidel did, Keenan Stotts. I don't know about you guys if you watched it. I didn't even I watch the whole it. thing, buddy. I didn't watch a minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least four of us know what's going on. So, uh, Let's talk about it. What what, what were you guys' uh, what, what's your guys' perspective on what occurred in the race? Very nice. It was enjoyable the whole way through. Even when you did get a little I agree. about that twenty four yeah. that twenty two hour mark, that was a little rough, but it was still very fun to watch. Yeah, lots it of kind of sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Can we fire him on the spot, please? <laughs> Not only for that comment alone, but just for making us wait in general. <laughs> well, look at your job applications. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Sal, uh, you Sal, you give point. your input, Fidel, and then you. Yeah, we'll, we'll let Fidel wait since he yeah. made us wait. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was my first time actually attempting to watch the majority of it, and I mean, I, I wasn't disappointed. There was action all around. Fidel, Great what about you? Yeah. I love it. Great. Same for me, like uh, Sal's experience. This is my first uh, Rolex 24, just watching from hour one to hour uh, 24. And I loved it throughout the whole throughout the whole entire time. What kind of sucked for me was the lack of competition, the LP3 clash, which uh, was basically just a shit show throughout the whole entire thing. <laughs> I think they could have done a Great lot job. better, but <laughs> already. <laughs> already we have broken the barrier. All right, thank you, Fabian. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Hold, get him out of here. <laughs> Maybe you suck, dog. <laughs> well, uh, my um, here here's my input on it. You know, last year I watched from hour one to hour twenty four. It the, last year's wasn't really good either, with the rain kicking in. It was just kind of boring from that point, and then it ending under caution for the most part, or it ran under caution for a good margin. But uh, you know, this year's race, it wasn't bad at all. You know, you had a lot of battles in DPI, LMP2, GT, and yeah, as Fabian said, no no competition at all in LMP3. But, uh, you know, it's a good race. Had Very much. set the record for Rolex 24 viewership, so they definitely did something, right? Yeah, they... Didn't include Fidel in any of it. That's, that was a smart move. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, moving on, we have some uh, more silly season moves right before we get into speed weeks for the Daytona 500, or leading up to the Daytona 500, the start of the NASCAR season. Um, Santino Ferrucci will drive for Sam Hunt Racing in the 26th part-time in Xfinity. Uh, you know, IndyCar experience. Weird that he's getting behind the wheel in NASCAR. What? what what's your guys' opinions on this? Uh, it's going to be an interesting season. Uh, not only for him, but for a lot of the drivers trying to prove themselves early on in this wacky 20, uh, decade so far. I'm interested. I don't think he's going to do all too well, 
but you never know what's going to happen. Start sound I feel like it may. Uh, Go ahead. For the, you're like ahead no. you I feel like we might have another resurgence of the IndyCar drivers uh, getting involved in the NASCAR scene like we did in, our, in the late 2000s, early 2010s. Dan Kapatrick, uh, Gary Frankie, Juan Paul Montoya, and all those other guys. Before Richie joining the sport, I feel like more IndyCar drivers will uh, follow his intuition and do the same. Man, I'm going to say it straight up. I don't care if he's running for Sam Hunt Racing. He's going to be trash. I mean, it's not a good car. If, either, even if he was in a good car, I just don't see him. He, he's got attitude issues. That's where I first look at him. He's got attitude problems, so I don't think anyone really wants to put up with his attitude. So that's the well, first thing. Kyle Busch. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, when you got M&M's and Snickers back in you, you know what I mean? I mean, here, here's another thing about Santino Ferrucci. He, he, his, he's got a lot of backlash on him already, and I'm, uh, I'm surprised, you know, it, you know, that's cool that he's made it as far as he has in his career, you know, made IndyCar, you know, he's going to NASCAR and all that. But, you know, as you said, Matthew, you, the, his attitude is a big problem, especially. So if he doesn't get that calmed down, I, I feel like a lot of people are going to be putting him in his place. Or he should be put in his place. <laughs> <laughs> Sal, you got anything to add? I mean, it's just cool to see other people go out. I mean, we have we saw it, like we discussed just a bit ago. We saw some NASCAR guys go in there and do Rolex. It's just, and then Johnson going to IndyCar. It's cool to see that um, more of these outside drivers of NASCAR are coming in wanting to do it. And although it might not be the best equipment, at least he's um I'm gonna give it a shot, I guess. <laughs> well, moving on, another Xfinity move, uh Ramu Brothers Racing. Uh for the twenty three entry partnered with Ryan Sieg's team. Uh oh. Natalie Decker getting a part time ride in Xfinity. Uh I I'm sure there's a lot of mixed feelings about this for you guys. She's the next Jimmy Johnson man, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. No expectations whatsoever coming in. Uh, from what I remember, I, I saw her more hitting the wall than I did actually seeing her go forwards. So, I guess she has something going for her. I mean, hey, I you never right, know. Right, so trucks. <laughs> I was oh, going to say a pretty face, but that works too. <laughs> Sal, you got anything? I feel there? like she's just a. I feel like she's just a Danica Patrick two point The first part of her career is just going to be the media trying to back her up, and once uh, she starts to show her real colors, it's uh, it's going to be a down, a downward spiral for her career. I think yeah. they're doing one good thing. And for Haley Deegan, they don't seem to be rushing her, which is a very good thing for someone of her caliber. She's really talented, but we see a lot of NASCAR drivers getting their career being hurt and wasted. Hurt and wasted because of just that rush factor, trying to get into the top line of sports and NASCAR in these cars that are either not very good or great. If you take uh, William Byron, for example. He was just rushed a bit, and you can really see at this point he's lacking a lot of his, uh, I can't even think of the word, race, race credibility, credibility. So it could go, it could go great or horribly very quickly. Hmm. Sal, you got anything to add? I mean, it's, I don't know. I, I try to give anyone the benefit of the doubt, um, but I feel like this is just going to end up winning a lot of torn race cars. Especially for a small team. Yeah, to for them to take a shot with someone like that. I, I don't know what they expect out of it. 
I do have one thing I want to go back to real quick. When Matthew said uh, he had Snickers and M and M's, all of them, uh, back in Kyle Busch, you gotta think, man. Those things are kind of meant for like sponsored towards kids and everything. It's wild that they have someone like Kyle Busch. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah. <laughs> I can't get over that. But uh, keep going forward. I didn't mean to bring us back there. I I, I just couldn't get that out of my head. <laughs> Fair enough, brother. Fair enough. <laughs> Well, Matthew, you have anything to add on the Decker move? I'm just glad it's only five races. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> See, my my whole opinion on it, it I feel like Deegan and Decker both kind of overshadow the other females in the sport. You know, we've had Jennifer Joe Cobb there for a while, but people kind of forget, you know, uh, we've got in the West series, you've got uh, Brittany Zamora, Bridget Burgess, uh, Gracie Trotter, Holly Holland, they all have d- amazing talent. Gracie Trotter got a win last year at Vegas. You know, they. I feel like if they take their time, like they have with Deegan, I feel like Deegan's getting a lot of media credibility because they know her talents in NASCAR. They know her background. Her last name does put a huge factor in, you know, the Deegan last name is big. And the fact that she's making that move to NASCAR and slowly climbing up that ladder, she's making the right decision. So all the other females in ARCA need to kind of follow in that foot in in those footsteps. As for Natalie Decker, what what have we seen? Like two seasons in ARCA, we saw two and a or one and a half in trucks, and then now she's in Xfinity part time, and that's basically it for her. I she's gonna be up in Cup whether people like it or not, but I, I don't know who would go with her, it, especially if her reputation <laughs> that she has is torn up race cars. I think a big key right now is because she's a woman in NASCAR, which is very hard to do. It's hard to get in NASCAR in general, but it's even harder to get in NASCAR as a woman. I'm just curious at the sponsorship she's drawing. I'm sure that could be a reason why they're taking these chances. Oh yeah, in 29, they're they're pushing her a lot. Yeah, and, uh, she has that um that foundation. I forgot what it was for. It's for something that she has the arthritis. Uh, yeah, she she has that backing her up too. And I mean, we've seen also with a bunch of people that it's just mainly sponsor driven now because of money issues yeah 100 percent. well i feel like that basically leaves us off for natalie decker's situation this one we saw jermaine shut down and we saw geico leave the sport ty dylan going to gaunt brothers racing in the 96 and he'll also be racing the clash in the 23 for 23 xi uh your your guys's opinion on ty dylan's move to Gaunt Brothers? Man, I wish he was in the three over Austin. Man, Mm. I think he's got more talent than Austin Dillon does, in my opinion. But, you know, Austin's the... Is it Austin's oldest, so he got there first. So, uh, if he wants to stay in NASCAR, that's basically his only option. I could see cars opening opening up in the future, possibly at Gibbs, that if he really shows that he could do something with that car. He might be able to get in there, but it's going to be tough. Yeah. Yeah. I've been hearing a lot uh, now with um, after like probably like a month, I want to say maybe even a couple weeks after they announced 23 11 racing, uh, Denny putting those blueprints where they do plan on expanding. Um. And I mean, I've been seeing it all over where John Hunter's Nemechek, even his move over back to trucks, a bunch of people are trying to line themselves up with Toyota now because they know that mm-hmm. there's something big going on there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, also on that whole Austin thing, like at least Ty's trying something outside of RCR. Yeah. So, I mean, that's pretty cool to see that he just doesn't want to go be known as that kid who's Richard Childress's ga- grandson, but he wants to go out there and prove he has 
talent and all that kind of reminds me of um jeffrey earnhardt he was yeah. given the opportunity with jrm but uh he goes out there and tries to make his own name not just feed off of the last name what about you fabian I think it must be the biggest move of a Titans career. Uh, maybe not the biggest right now, but probably run one of the biggest right now. But wait, that didn't make any sense. Hold up. Something that will benefit that. him in his future, basically. Yes. Right now, him moving to Toyota is a lot better. It's not like Austin Dillon just going to be running off, running off his grandfather's money for his whole entire career. I don't know, he's trying to make a name for himself and just about himself. Not about the family, just himself. Stodge, you got anything to add? Uh, I feel like it was the best decision for him. Um, uh, he chose to go a different route uh, that, you know, Austin and, you know, other people wouldn't have taken. And, you know, Suarez did not that... He actually, Suarez didn't do bad in that car when he ran it last year. And, you know, I think Ty Dillon can... Put up some good numbers, not obviously a static number. You know, I just I think coming home, good finishes, and keep the car in one piece. And I think that's what's most important for that team right now. Well, I mean, I, I'd have to agree with Fabian on it. it. You know, it it may not look like a bigger, you know, interesting decision now, but that's definitely going to benefit him in the future, especially if he's going to be racing for Hamlin and Jordan's team. That's already showing. You know, he's gonna possibly be with gibbs in the near future uh, whether it's an xfinity or cup i mean we've seen what he's been able to do in xfinity we've seen what he's done in trucks we, it, it's the factor if he can get the equipment behind him and i honestly do think you know this could lead to big things for ty Dillon in the future but uh on to the next silly season move we're not really silly season kind of just you know another return uh, Jamie McMurray doing the Daytona 500 for Spire Motorsports in the 77. Uh, I love it. All right, say that again real quick. I kind of just... McMurray to the 77 for Spire in the Daytona uh, 500. Love it. Absolutely love it. Miss McFlurry. <laughs> no matter how many times he wrecked me in NASCAR, I always had respect for the guy. Sal, you got anything? Yeah, I mean, it's always great to see Jamie Mack back in. Um, it's going to be cool to see what he does. I mean, I'm pretty sure he'll... Does he have to race his way in? Or does he have the charter? Uh, I think Spire has the charter for both cars. They have yeah. this <clears throat> charter through Hendrick Motorsports, don't they? I think so. Or no, it was the JTG one. Oh, yeah, they, they got the 37's charter. Or, yeah, 37. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's it's going to be cool to see him. Um, he's definitely, in my opinion, a very underrated plate racer, at least. Uh, but it, it'd be cool. It's going to be cool to see him back on the track. Okay. Fabian? Obviously, it plays a huge nostal- nostalgic factor. I When I started watching NASCAR, I, I saw that big old red McDonald's number one car, and this seeing McMurray back in the sport, even though it's just a one-time thing, it really puts a just a huge smile on my face. Stats. Um, I'm glad to see it. Um, dude's a really good plate racer, and you know, obviously that's what Spire kind of wants for that one-time thing. And uh, I hope he can, you know, have a good have a good finish to it for this one and only race this season. Yeah. It'd be wild after already winning the uh, Coca Cola, the Coke Zero 400, then turn around to come through to win the 500. Well, hasn't he won the 500 already? Because he won like all he three has. big races in the same year. Yeah, he he beat my favorite driver. I promise. I remember it. <laughs> well, I mean, just like you guys, I, I love the move. Yeah. I like how he's coming back for the 500. I like how a few of the drivers doing that. Same thing with David Reagan going to the 36 just for the race. You know, it, it's cool to see these guys that kind of were, at least for us, uh, you know, childhood, seeing them race full time and everything. And now we're seeing them, you know, retired for the most part, but coming back for the 500. So as Fabian said, it's kind of nostalgic. 
hundred percent. Uh, next move Stotts. I know you don't really follow IndyCar. Uh, Sal, I believe this is going to be your first year following IndyCar. Uh, Roman Grosjean to Rick Ware Racing's 51 car. The GOAT. The, uh, the 10 goat. years of experience in Formula One. You know, he's got that open wheel experience. Do you guys think this is a good move? Good move in the aspect of, I think it's a good move for Roman Grosjean, who clearly wants to keep racing. IndyCar was pr- pretty much his next best option, and he got a ride for it. I'm happy for him. Especially since what he went through the last time he was in a race car. It's just, I don't know what he's going to be able to produce for the team. I don't know as much as y'all do about Dale Coin or IndyCar in general. So I'm kind of curious to see what unfolds. Yeah, it depends. I don't, I mean, the only race, if I'm not wrong, the only race uh, Rick Ware did last year was the Indy 500. Yeah, and they wrecked out. So well, their engine, <laughs> ki- well, their engine kind of, you know, just kind of yeah. died. Yeah. Went boom, boom. Um, or no, I don't even think it was the engine. I think it was the brakes. Yeah, it was something. We- I remember there was a fire. I think. Yeah, I think it was in the tire. I think like the in- just the brakes kind of blew. Yeah, so I mean, I don't know. I I wasn't paying as much attention to them that race, um. But I don't know if they're gonna be like NASCAR fast or they're actually gonna try to put some effort into this. So I mean, but I mean, it goes back to the thing earlier. It's just cool to see all these, or not all these drivers, but some drivers like going out of their comfort zone. Um, I'm pretty sure there's a remarkable difference between Indy and F1. So it's just going to be good to see see what he can do, see if he can take this team somewhere. Fabian? I feel like it feel, it's going to be a great direction for uh, Rick Rare and uh, Grosjean. Grosjean, obviously, hasn't been in the car since the Bahrain accident. And uh, with all that experience with Formula One, I think it would be great for uh, Rick Rare Racing just... Get that team started in in uh, IndyCar. But to also add on, Sasha Banks is going to be at the Daytona 500. Just tweeted from the w- from the WWE two hours ago. Hmm. That's going to be interesting. Stotts, you got anything to add on Grosjean to RWR? Uh, no, not really. Well, you know, my opinion on it, the F1 experience, sure, the cars drive different, but it's still open wheel experience, you know, same type of (coughs) practice when it comes to learning how to kind of make your body settle into the car. Uh, You know, they're getting that Dale Coyne partnership. Dale Coyne's been a midfield team at best. You know, they've won a few races. I, I think it will work. It will take time. He's not doing the ovals. But, you know, Rookie of the Year, is, is it's looking pretty interesting for IndyCar when you've got a 10-year experienced F1 driver and a seven-time Cup Series champion battling for Rookie of the Year. But, uh, you know, besides that, I think it, it could be a good move if he sticks around in IndyCar or not. It's just more experience under his belt. 100%. But uh, the last thing we have to talk about this Sunday... You know, we've got a we've got a Chargers fan in here, we got two Steelers fans, we got a Cowboys fan, and we got a Panthers fan. Who's winning the Super Bowl? Uh Kansas City. Gotta go with old Patrick. Kansas City F A B. That's beautiful. Oh, what about Le'Veon? You're not gonna say anything about your good pal Le'Veon? I love Le'Veon. The only reason Matthew's polling I'll never forget it. Matthew, let's be real. The only reason you're polling for Kansas is because you don't like Antonio Brown. That and I prefer Le'Veon Bell over him. Fair enough. (laughs) (laughs) If only y'all treated him right. We rocked him like a baby. Don't you ever (laughs) tell us how we treat him. Well, you clearly dropped him a couple times. (laughs) And look, look at your running back. 
<laughs> Looks like he's been dropped a couple times as well with the injuries. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At least well, my running back can run the ball. Leave us alone. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, Sal, there's only one you? thing for the Steelers oh. that I care for. Mason Rudolph, because you got hit in the head with that. <laughs> <laughs> you keep bringing that up, homie. Mm-hmm. The last time y'all saw I'm the a, playoffs, I'm when keep Cam it. didn't have freaking leg injuries or shoulder uh, injuries. Last time keep... I checked, Cam Newton's not on the Carolina Panthers. <laughs> and what happened? To, what, 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 Who's you your quarterback? Like now, didn't he get knocked out about 50 times? Uh, well, I'm not going to say that. Some, say that. That's, that's a sensitive subject. But uh, <laughs> we'll go over there. Uh, don't make me call Miles Garrett real quick. Yeah, Man, go get your Teddy, get Teddy Bridgewater and get his teddy bear and send him home to bed. That's exactly what he needs to oh, do. Oh man, to home to I bed. can't wait to see Dwayne Haskins throw five interceptions instead of Big Ben. He's going to average more touchdowns than your fucking quarterback. Oh, excuse my French. Excuse my French. Oh, no. Yeah, uh, it'll be for the other team. Excuse oh. my French. My French came out. My apologies. <laughs> I'm surprised you've had a read for... for at this point. <laughs> Bro, Corvette, Corvette. Man, when y'all see the playoffs is when I turn 85 years old. And I probably won't be alive <laughs> by then. Well, you probably won't be. Sal, let's just not interject. <laughs> let's, just, no, let's just stay out of this. We don't need to get targeted. <laughs> Great. Uh, well, I don't have to say anything about the Chargers. They got a kid from Green. They got a dude from Greensboro, so I don't got any problems with them. Uh, Dallas, I think they do it to themselves. <laughs> but, uh, Pittsburgh, I'm, I'm always on Pittsburgh. Well, oh, what about yeah, you, yeah. Sal? Like, Who's winning? Um, I'm going to be honest. I, I want Kansas City to win just because I feel like Brady's got enough rings out there. Um, I'm, no also just, no I'm also just kids. hoping that these... One of these quarters in in one zero or seven four because I got money on this. Yes, I would love to see a <laughs> one point. Thing. That would be that would literally make my day. Well, Dope. time for the other <laughs> Steelers <laughs> fan. Fabian, but I don't know what the hell football is? Let's see how long he makes us wait this time. <laughs> Fabian. <laughs> Please don't bully me. All I know, like, <laughs> who's winning? All I know, like. Rules of football. Who's this Sunday, um, is going off of last year and going with the Chiefs. Oh, basic bomb. <laughs> Shut up. Well, well. So I'm gonna be the only one here to think this. Don't you do it. I- I'm, gonna do do it. it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. We will take. We're over not the podcast. gonna. We're not gonna awesome. witness the passing of the torch. We're gonna witness the Tampa Bay Buccaneers winning the Super Bowl, and wouldn't they become the first team in NFL history to win the Super Bowl in their home stadium? They're also. Yeah, that's good for them, but uh, that's not happening. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's happening. I'll take Tyree. It's 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 Tom Brady. It, it, what, what are you? His back thrown back into out of shape or whatever. Gosh, no. he's gonna. That can be taken look. several different ways. Tom gonna look like that old dude from Up. Honestly, what you say? <laughs> your, your QB has the nickname of a teddy bear. Okay, bro. <laughs> your QB lost to the Browns. Hey. I'm sorry. Hey. You lost to the playoffs. You 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 want me to make oh, wow. you want me to make you feel bad, Stotts? Oh, if you guys if you guys if you guys had beaten the Browns before the playoffs, you wouldn't have had to play them in the playoffs. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, I got clapped by anyone else. <laughs> you guys lost to the Bengals. The- Holy, the Jets would have made it farther than they did. The, the okay. Jets would have done better than y'all. The, man, what you smoking, bro? Pass it. I want a, I want a little puff puff. <laughs> <laughs> Tune in next time for more of this. <laughs> Freezing takes by Keen and Kimber. That's what it's called. Freezing takes? Your takes are as cold as skip. They as cold as Ben Roethlisberger when he sits at home <laughs> without any heat on. What's in here, mother? 
effort. <laughs> I'm gonna let you know something, homie. I don't like your attitude. <laughs> oh, I don't like that Ben Roethlisberger throws four interceptions <laughs> and a half. Okay, he throws four interceptions and a half. And, and a half. And a half. <laughs> <laughs> How he came well, listen, to the realization. The main point is, is that we got sick of rings. Y'all got zero. When was the last time y'all done anything in the Super Bowl? 2010. 2010? Didn't, didn't Green Bay yeah, win they that? Lost. Yeah, 2011, they lost. No, 2011, 2010. 2010, 2011. Or it was 2010 and 20, or 2009. I'm pretty sure it was 2007. <laughs> Oh, well, listen, bro. I-, I hate to call you out, but I know damn well that math wrong. <laughs> well, let's look it up. Hey, oh, go. Look it okay, up, then. You got well, the math of Patrick. The Steelers beat the Cardinals in the Super Bowl. Yes, we beat the Cardinals in the Super Bowl. February 1st, 2009. February 1st, 2009. Who said it? Who said it? Me. You over here saying 2007. After you boy. said 2010, the year you lost. Well, you said 2007. Oh, yeah, I did. It's okay. You know what? I'm really upset right now. Well, you're probably mad at Big Ben for throwing four interceptions and a half. You know what? I'm mad at this other Pittsburgh fan not saying shit. <laughs> Be quiet, why don't you? You're probably an Eagles fan. Traitor. <laughs> at least, well, at least they have a future. Oh. Only the, they, oh, oh, that future gone. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh no! It's always fun talking to you, Matthew. Hundred percent. I I think Suck this it. is great having <laughs> having all five of us here, and you just let stuff like this happen. It's <laughs> great. But uh, you know, I I think that it's wraps it up. I th- I think we're done. <laughs> I don't think we have anything else to t- comment on. So you when right, we, you right. When we come back, it will be uh. You know, next next Friday after the Super Bowl launched into Speed Weeks, we'll have stuff to talk about. But as for that, uh, I think we're about done. Celebration. What 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 was that, Keenan? Uh, the person who I wanted to hear heard it. That's all that matters. Oh. Steelers well, suck. if it was me, homie, <laughs> I didn't hear it. <laughs> All right, good talking to you boys. All right. Thank you guys for uh, coming on tonight. Hopefully uh, we can get all five of us again next week. But thank you all for joining us. We'll see you guys next time on the Burning Rover podcast. Have a good night, everybody. It's uh, I got a big red bar. So oh? something about connection struggling. Oh, well.